Radiation monitors in Sweden and Finland this morning are showing unusually high readings in places three times normal levels. At the moment, the source of those emissions is a mystery, but speculation has arisen of a nuclear power plant accident inside the Soviet Union. It may seem difficult to believe, but we know more about this nuclear accident than the people living in the Soviet Union. The Soviet media downplaying the disaster, keeping the people there in the dark. На Чернобыльской атомной электростанции произошла авария. Поврежден один из атомных реакторов. Принимаются меры по ликвидации последствий аварии. Пострадавшим оказывается помощь. Создана правительственная комиссия. Moscow Television claimed the Western media are spreading rumors. We will show a photograph taken by one of the workers at the Chernobyl nuclear plant taken just after. So there is no, there is no gigantic damage and there is no great fires. And there aren't thousands of people dead. Buonasera. Le conseguenze del disastro nella centrale nucleare di Chernobyl in Unione Sovietica concentrano quasi totalmente l'attenzione di tutto il mondo. Le autorità di Mosca confermano che, al contrario da quanto detto da più parti, l'incidente ha fatto solo due morti, mentre quasi 200 sono le persone ricoverate in ospedale. All day there was speculation that a meltdown had occurred in a second reactor at the Chernobyl complex. Tonight, however, that seems unlikely. There are conflicting reports coming out of the Soviet Union. We do know that a zone of deadly radiation is being released from the damaged plant, and the accident is far from over. Good evening. A senior government minister admitted to the Commons today that after Chernobyl, it was no good. Scientists and politicians simply asserting that everything is all right with nuclear power. This is what the Soviet government tried to cover up. A catastrophic nuclear accident, something the world had never seen before. Reactor 4 at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant had exploded, releasing lethal amounts of radiation into the atmosphere. In this photograph taken by Igor Kostin, radiation can visibly be seen as it contaminates the photographic film within his camera. In this control room, Leonid Toptonov, a young but senior technician, began an experiment which led to an extremely unstable reactor configuration. To this day, many of the switches remain untouched, still in the same position they were the morning of the accident. As the reactor core lay exposed, a plume of highly radioactive smoke continued to rise into the skies. Chernobyl, located 82 miles north of Ukraine's capital city, Kiev, was once a small town located in the far east of the Soviet Union. Nuclear fallout from the explosion was initially spread hundreds of miles, carried by the wind in clouds. Neighboring towns and cities were heavily contaminated. However, nearly 1,000 miles from Chernobyl, Sweden was the first country to detect that something disastrous had happened. The fallout had even reached the United Kingdom. North Wales had been contaminated the worst, and even to this day, 330 hill farms have restrictions on them. The darker orange areas of this map are badly contaminated, and the red areas are severely contaminated with cesium-137, an isotope released into the atmosphere by the reactor explosion. The result was, and still is, devastating. Belarus was by far the worst affected, life-changing effects. Some of these effects are illnesses like thyroid cancer, birth defects like dysplasia, deformation, intellectual disabilities, pain and 
suffering and all caused by an invisible force. London, one of the largest and busiest cities in the world. Radiation can be found here and all other cities. Known as background radiation, it is constantly present in the environment of Earth, which is emitted by natural and artificial sources. A normal background radiation level is considered to be between 0.10 and 0.30 microsieverts, a measure of radiation dose. big house. I guess it was some something like uh, synagogue, some uh, religious uh, building, religious structure. These tanks were used during the evacuation of Chernobyl and Pripyat. Nikolai explains more. Here it's uh, already 16. Yeah, but closer it's increasing. Nine. So it's already 90 times more than normal. But I think it's absolutely enough. 0.2. 0.15. Zero point thirteen, so it's it's okay. No, all all places in uh, Chernobyl are clean. So these uh, robots, they have been on the roof of third uh, reactor of third unit. They were broken a few days after because the radiation fields pretty highly contaminated. So it's about. Uh, 20, 25 microsieverts.
those guys, they were heroes. Uh, those 28 firefighters, they came first, uh, they came two minutes after the blast, so they didn't know anything about uh, radiation. They didn't have any protection and they received huge, huge doses of uh, radiation and then died a couple of weeks after. They sacrificed their own lives to save millions of another. Hot spot is here. 150, 3, but we try to measure this bone. It's like local fun, local entertainment. Everybody who who go to the lunch, who can team. Everybody feed this fish on the, on the way back. Excellent sound. Three point four, three point five, six, eight, six milli, six point two. 
enough. So tomorrow um, we're going to be seeing um, Pripyat. Um, we didn't get to see it today, um, uh, simply because you know because I'm here for two days. It, it, it was just easier to spend a bit more time um, around um, the the power plant today uh, and uh, Chernobyl and other bits uh, and pieces around the actual uh, around the actual power plant itself. Um, so tomorrow we're going to be spending. A majority of the day in Pripyat, uh, and we're also going to be speaking to um, some of the resettlers. Um, these are, you know, people that have basically um, moved back into neighbouring towns uh, after being uh, uh, ushered away from from Chernobyl uh, and the other smaller towns uh, around. Um, but they've actually, you know, um, come back over the years and uh, and they're now living, you know, within close proximity to um, the exclusion zone. Um, so we're going to be chatting to some of these people. Uh, I was told earlier the average age of the resettler is 65 years old. Um, so they're, they're, they're getting on in age. Um, and, um, you know, they, they are slowly um, passing away, but not because of uh, any um, radiation related sicknesses. It's just old age, um, which, you know, is another, uh, another example of, of, you know, how kind of safe the area, the area is, as long as you obviously stick to the rules. Where was he on the on the day of the accident? Was he working? On the day of the accident, was he working? Uh, on the day of the accident, was he working? He worked here on the collective farm. Okay. Uh -huh. uh -huh. I was here on the collective farm. 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 I was here on the collective they knew about the accident and the next day. The next day? Yeah. yeah. So they weren't told immediately? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it was the usual day. Just the usual day, nobody knows about it. Did he perhaps lose any relatives or family uh, in, in the disaster at all? Uh, was втратили родичів після аварії. Да, втратили. Хто? Ну, мої то так і ще моя родня то ще так. Матка одна погибла. Мама ваша? Да. А є і сестра, і і друга сестра погибла, і і вже читай зяті, як там вже чоловік погиб і І я тут не Бож погиб уже считай двоє родні сестри, чи родні сестри, син тоже погиб. He lost his mother and both sisters. So he is alone. 
А друзья моих почти что все. And uh, almost all friends are dead. Так как те, что за мной работали, so, so guys who were то ни одного не With him on the pole, and so all of all, all of them are dead. Dead. Да. А где я бабушка ваша поживая? Да заболела же тоже. Заболела. Да ноги. Да лежите ви лежите в институте. His wife, but uh, he is uh, very sick now, so now he is uh, in the hospital. Now he is alone. Я при советской власти лежал, я попал под трохи под аварию. Так я и рубля не заплатил, даже у, свой, у своей одежды не лежал, у их одежды. Пришли, раздели меня, положили и вылечили. He, he says that и бесплатно. He, he can feel radiation oh. without uh, any counters. <laughs> Правда, вы же можете радиацию вычислять без счетчика? Могу. He can. He can feel it. Yeah. What does it feel like? Ну если я попал в радиацию, меня сразу губи сохнуть, в горле, дыре, и голова крутит, в голове крутится, и все, и то знаешь, уже попал, и то я вискакую скорее оттуда. Pripyat was founded in 1970 to house workers for the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. It was officially proclaimed a city in 1979, but was abandoned following the Chernobyl disaster. Pripyat was a modern city, ahead of its time and home to around 50,000 people before the accident. Pripyat is located less than two and a half miles away from the power plant. It had a defined city centre where the city hall, the largest shopping centres, major recreational facilities, restaurants and bars were located. The day after the accident, the city council of Pripyat informed its residents the need to temporarily evacuate due to deteriorating radioactive conditions. They recommended its people to take their documents, some vital personal belongings, and to ensure that lights were turned off, electrical equipment and water off, and windows shut. The council insisted that everyone remained calm and orderly in the process of a short-term evacuation. Propriat's people would never return.
to the main square. That Palace of Culture. And the rest of buildings are usual apartments. This uh, Palace of Culture consisted of uh, two departments, uh, cultural and sport department. So cultural uh, department includes uh, theater, disco bar, this room, and uh, small uh, meeting hall. And con uh, sport part consisted of sport hall, big sport hall, small swimming pool on the ground floor and uh, boxing ring and different sport sections. Uh, Midland Park, it's never so children. It was a period of Cold War between USA and USSR. So every, every school, every kindergarten had a storage with the gas masks. See, it's a little size so for children. Nothing, 0.6. Uh, this way. This is the hospital basement where clothing of the 28 firemen was discarded. Point 
seven. Oh, here we are. See, part of the suit. This closes. Nine. Ten. Not so much. Further. These shoes. Oh. Sixteen. Fifteen. Still nothing. Oh, this is it. This is the shoe of the firefighter. 300, 420, 540. Another one, 400, 500, rope of the firefighter. 170 Let's check This is it, this is the room Oof. With gloves Imagine how much they received. Pripyat are still amazing places. There simply is nowhere else quite like them. They were once thriving, full of life, but now they will be abandoned forever until nature breaks them down to the point where they won't exist anymore.